everybody. But it's time to continue the book reading blog of The Girl Who Brought Down the World. And the book still survived a house fire. And because I misread it last week, I'm going to read two chapters this week. So here we are, chapter three. Cops. Okay. Kate drops her pencil and closes her diary. The noise that she heard distracted her from finishing the day's entry. Mom? Dad? It's too early to be special time. Does that mean I can't come out? Ye yelled Kid from inside her room. Kid, don't go out! Vivian yelled back. Okay. She went up and locked her door. She stared up at the ceiling while she kept hearing various banging and shattering noises. <laughs> Special time, but Mom and Dad is really loud this time. She turned up the radio. Ah, I also turned up. Kid, let me in, dear Lord, let me in, screamed Miles from outside the room. Listen to your father, let us in, Neko Mimi. And next up from the QT, 96.9, the Striped Zebras. We were watching with our... Eyes as little guide. We saw fifteen people moving the groove, so we joined them up in stride. We were dancing. Man, I hate this band. She turns off the radio and hears only silence. Can I come out now? No response. Oh, I guess I can come out now. It's over, right? She unlocks the door and sees the house in ruins. Hmm. She takes a few steps outside and sees the family car missing. She decides to go back inside and make herself a sandwich. Hmm, there isn't much left in the refrigerator. I must have gone out grocery shopping. Wish I could help her decorate the house. She munches her sandwich and watches some television. An hour passes and still no sign of the family. The television burns up and breaking news segment begins. Hmm. This sounds concerning. Alright. Urgent news! Currently there is a three-way police chase between an insane man, a family, and a police squadron, reports the anchor. Currently there is no information about the situation except this police tape given out to all news stations in the area. That's our car! Kid exclaims. What you're about to see is might smite small children. Eh, yeah, I can take it. A poorly focused shot is focused on the television. Hmm. All right, we're here about the 911 call, shouts the police officer. Mr. Trisco bet about the insane man. The inside of kid's house is shown in. Grip the bell. Brandishing a knife can be seen chasing after... Vivian, Miles, Mimi, and Melanie. Huh. All right, remember that time. I love you, Melanie. The caps. No shirts aren't gonna get me this time. Don't grip the bell. As he lunges towards the officer, the officer is stabbed at a chest as he attempts to call for backup. Grip the bell resumes looking for Melanie. Sir, we legally cannot harm this man, says the cameraman. What? He exclaims as he attempts to stop the bleeding. What do you mean we can't take this guy down? Miles and Mimi can be seen banging on Kid's door. All right, then, shouts the officer. We have to get these people out here as soon as possible. Just then, Kid's family and Melanie rush out the door and into the family car while Quick the Bell runs next door into his own. Okay, man, let's go. Uh, just then, Quick the Bell rams his vehicle into the officer's car, damaging the engine and immediately chasing after the family car. Alright, go, Quick the Bell. Take down a damn jerk cop vehicle. Alright, let's see. That's okay. God dang it! That bad thought destroyed the engine! Jim! What were you saying about not being an armless man? He's under government attention, informs the cameraman. 
says that here that he is under legal protection and we could all go to jail for the rest of our lives just for hurting him. What the hell? Yeah, the newly elected Democrat just passed some bill that gives his kind some sort of legal protection from their own actions. They say he is unable to fully process his thoughts or something like that. Hmm. Hmm. Page, page, page. There we go. Earth, damn hippies! Get me, they runs outside, looks for any signs of the family. Hmm, a police car shows up. Hello, little girl! You wondering what happened to your house? says an officer. Why would he know? I just watched it on television. Do you know what he's doing right now? My family okay? They will be as long as the car still has enough fuel. Who knows what he will do if he catches up to them? My family die. Hmm. Maybe. Crypto Bell turns on his radio as he chases after the family car. He listens to the report of an insane man in a car chase with the police. Well, I'm glad I'm not crazy like him. Yeah, you definitely aren't. Let's go get our future wife and daughter. Billy, I love you. Wait a minute, uh, is he talking to himself here? Huh. Miles attempts to shake Crypto Bell off. Well, for an insane man, he's an impressive driver, notes Miles. Come on, honey, try harder. This is not how I imagined I would die. I was imagining accidentally using a real gun instead of a fake gun during a movie rehearsal. Mimi continues on forgetting about Crypto Bell. Mom, but it's this at the time. Come on, Dad, you can shake that fat off. I swear to God, if we get stopped. I'm ready to take him down with this fork. Hey man, you, hey man, you can't go, Crystal Bell. Don't you remember the new laws and foreign money? Well, of course I do. I don't care about that. Fair to that freaking dead. I'm glad they be executed as long as that guy don't live. Oh, uh, we're nearly out of gas. Any ideas, says Miles. The police continue to chase after Crystal Bell. How in the hell did Crypto Bell manage to get past our PIT maneuver and our spike strips one off those games? You know, we haven't had a car chase in over 15 years. It's been a while, replies another. So how are we gonna stop him without killing him? Eh, I have no clue. May God make sure that family is safe, hmm? Huh? Miles decides to take an, ed take an exit and go to the nearest gas station. Shoot. I don't have any cash. I don't have my wallet on me. Anyone got any cash? Miles asks. Um. Then I will become rich all the time. What are you doing with you? Oh, and I don't have. Oh, I don't have any money on me, says Mimi. Yeah, I spent all. Spent all on ice cream, says Mimi. Nope, says Vivian. Grip the bell's car stopped right behind him. Melody! Why do you run away when our love is written in the stars? I had a dream about it. God told me to bury you and have a future daughter. yippee ki yay mofo! Shouts Vivian as she attempts to stab him with a fork. Crick the bell merely takes a step to the left as Vivian crashes head first into the concrete. Ouch. Melanie begins to run while Biles and Mimi tend to Vivian. Now he soon realizes that Crypto Bell is too fat to actually chase after her. So this fact steals behind her to see Crypto Bell. A breath. Ugh, thank God, says Melanie. Once she watches him attempt to reach her, Crypto Bell then walks back to his car and begins to start to shoot. Melanie watches as the car slowly reaches her. Melanie! Crypto Bell shouts. Please, I only want your love! She runs past the car and back to Miles, who is still tending to Vivian. Well, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do now, this, this Melanie. And me neither. Crystal Bell slowly turns his car around and makes his way to the group. Just then, Mimi walks to the car and forces Crystal Bell out. Mimi, 
Huh. Oh. the Bell, I'm really your future wife. I've been waiting for a day that you would come to me. I've been waiting so long. She begins to break down and grinds on her shoulders. Why haven't you shown up in my life sooner? You're not really my true future. You're not really my true future wife, Crypto Bell replied. Why do you send me, Crypto Bell? I just want to be in your life and have your future daughter. If you really are my future wife, you will bear my child. Oi, really? Crypto Bell then begins to take off his pantalones. My empty license never prepared me for set scenes, she yells and then immediately runs back to Miles. The police car arrives and puts a barrier between Crypto Bell and the group. Hey. Enough is enough, Crypto Bell. We're putting you under arrest. Wait, we can do that, right? Says one officer. Um, yeah, I'm feeling sure we can. Right, Crypto Bell, you're under arrest. You jerk. Uh, you. Um. <sighs> Uh, you jerks can't stop me this time. I'm waiting for the day. Quit the bell is shouted as he attempts to walk towards them. He takes a step and trips on his pants. Huh. All right, boo. Let's get this family out of here. The officer shouts. At the police station, the police the press swarms the area. The chief attempts to answer some questions and eventually shoes them all away inside. Vivian wakes up. Huh. So this is what hell looks like, muttered Vivian. No, we're all at the police station, Vivian, Mimi responds. So what happened? I'm not sure, but we're safe. Your father's over there talking with Melanie about Crypto Bell. After you attempted to kill him, you are not unconscious, and we were saved by the police. So? So, what happened to Crypto Bell? The police are handling that issue, says Mimi as she motions over to Miles. Great, that's good to hear. Wait, what about Kid? Oh, she's being taken over here right now. Hi! Shouts Kid. Kid, why didn't you open the door up for us? Shouts Mimi as Kid walks over to them. I was told to stay inside. Not many strangers come in. Well, at least you're safe and that's all that matters. Uh, we have a problem can't return to our house. The house had sustained too much damage when Crypto Bell entered. Ugh, how bad is the damage? asked Mimi. When Crypto Bell started swinging his axe, the foundation for the walls became too weak. We now violate building codes. Eh, you guys can live with me, says Melanie. I have two rooms I could convert into guest rooms. Not so, says one officer. Crypto Bell now knows where you live. You'd be unsafe there. We can't put him in jail for longer than a week. But, says Melanie, the Democrats and their liberal agenda gave his kind way too much lenience on his rights. Hey, you get back out there. No one is allowed in there. I'll be able to help, replies the man. Who oh, good? He's got clearance, replies the officer. He's here to provide a group place for the group to stay, says another. No well, problem solved then. Who are you? asks Mimi. My name is John Brimley. The half-brother of Cryptobel Vega. Half-brother. Huh. Cryptobel is... No, Crypto Bell is still on the ground. Ten minutes after the police cars had taken the group away, he cries out in pain. Uh. The pain I feel in my body does not begin to compare to the pain in my heart, he shouts. He gets up and looks around. It's as quiet as, it is quiet at the gas station. The man inside the station refused to open up for Crypto Bell. Get away, you crazy! Crypto Bell turns away and looks toward the sky. He does not know what, what, not know what he's looking for. Hey, there's some good, there's some good grammar there. Does not know what is looking for. Should be what he is looking for. But his heart tells him love for Melanie. 
gets back into the car and listens to the radio. Um, I think I feel like the story turned off. I mean, didn't he get arrested just now? Or is everybody still at the, the gas station? I thought they were at the police station. Huh. Wow. I'm not sure what to make heads or tails here. Anyway, moving on. Um, okay, he gets back to the car listens to the radio. The police chase has ended with the family in safe hands. Rose Rousey, church keep keep him on me away from me. Cryptobell yells and he smashes the radio. He uses his laptop and wireless connection to locate every police station in the area. He finds the nearest one of bright sewers. Tell me where Melanie is, shout Cryptobell. Please don't hurt me, begs the receptionist. I would never hurt a pretty lady. Only if she was pretty tough, ugly girls are below me. Hmm. Grip the bell, takes out his hat, and begins to hack away at the desk. An elderly man enters the room. Please, we have nothing to do with Melanie. Please just go. Leave quietly. Grip the bell, steps outside with hats and head in hand. Yeah. I'll be able to see the expression on my face as I genuinely respond to this and say, like, really? Eh? Mm. All right, chapter four, Asylum. All right, Jones, Kepler. Welcome to my mansion, says Jones. You have ice cream, Mr. Yes, pretty. How can you afford all this? asked Vivian. I'm rich! Oh boy. <laughs> this is a good comparison to movie crit. I'm rich! I'm a famous newspaper colonist. I have written many books with five of them silvering over a million copies. I have to apologize for my half brother's behavior. Huh. Off topic, I can compare this with my half brother. <laughs> I'm rich! I'm a famous movie reviewer! I've recorded so many videos and uploaded them onto my website for free, coastme.com. And I get to be paid for going here and going there. I take my wife everywhere with me. And what do I do with all this money that I keep getting in there and out? We pay heavy rent in New York City. Is this send it to my mother? And her daughter. You hear me, Cole? Cole Smitty! Anyway, back to the story. Oh. Yeah, no problems. If you're rich as you say you are, Vivian Smirk. One more thing, Jones. How did Cryptobell become this way? Oh, you're in for a long story. It all began 30 years ago. My father took me from place to place, always having one night stands with chicks, and then just moving on his way. He was a musician, a fairly talented one, who let his ego get to him. Oh boy, if you knew the trope about Cole's actual father, Vivian, <laughs> you're pretty much don't, you're pretty much describing the opposite of him. <laughs> nah. Well, one night he met Christabel's mother. For some reason, he decided to have a change of heart and stay with her to raise Cryptobell. The day he was born was the day I was shut out of family. Huh. That's definitely not the case for Cole, either. They paid so much attention to him. Perhaps for good reason. Cryptobell wasn't an ordinary child. He was slow in learning, yet quick to be at. I remember he once told me about his dreams of being on some kid's show. He always said that the dreams were God-given. Religion never played too big a role in the family. Not the Cryptobell's birth, religion began to strangle us. They wanted anything to make Cryptobell a better person. I watched him grow up from a child to a teenager. He always tried to get a girlfriend, and he would fail miserably every time. At this point, my family barely acknowledged my existence. I decided to leave the family and hit it big. A few years later, I received an email from Cryptobell saying that my father is dead. 
few days later, his mom died too. Couldn't now suffer a terrible life. So I bombed the house we had lived in. Ever since then, I haven't heard back until now. She whiz, replied Vivian. Yes, religion was a very key role. We would go to church every Sunday and we would listen. Trip the bell did not want to listen. He got us kicked out of two churches, and we finally settled on one to make Christabel stand still. It was a black church. They sure knew how to science Christabel. <laughs> black church. Hmm. All right, no, I need mean, uh... Yeah, so Jones, what about Christabel? Can you still find us here? And the worries I thought to do security on the mansion grounds. I'll never figure out how to get past them. Well, here we are, your new home. The doors of the mansion were open, and inside was a large entrance hall filled with many doors. Everyone dispersed into their rooms, and they all came together for dinner. The family and Melanie finally felt safe. In the morning, Melanie and Miles went off to work, while Jones went and began writing a new column about... Launching animals into space. Hmm. Well, that's... I don't know, just... Funny thing about humor, it's... Things that make us laugh is the things that we don't even expect. And I did not expect that. <laughs> anyway, hmm. Well, we moved again, huh, kid? Said Vivian. Well, I like it here. Here, yeah, ice cream! Kid enthusiastically replied. Still... I can't quite shake the feeling that something is wrong. Then that alarm sounded. Uh -huh. Are you finally found the place to my sweetheart? Yeah, crit the bell. Crit! Crit! Climbs the electrical fence! Where my future daughter? I must reach Melanie! Jones observed crit the bell from inside the mansion. How the hell is he not feeling any pain? The bell nearly reaches the door when Jones pulls out his final card. He sends out his sole female bodyguard outside. Oh, I'm glad I'm getting paid tons for this, she thinks. Really? Huh. She begins to strip for Cryptobell, revealing all of her body to him. Cryptobell is paralyzed. He has never seen a natural woman naked before. And then he has that laptop? He falls down while attempting to reach out to her. Well, there, he down. Where shall we take him? asked the bodyguard. Take him back to his house, he replies. Now there! Moans Crit the Bell as he's being taken away. Jones contemplated on what had just occurred between him and his half brother. The family blood is the sole connection between them and nothing more. He goes to sleep, not letting the terrible news he will have to break in the morning. Get the bell trying to get me again? Melanie exclaimed. Hey, I'm afraid so, Melanie, Jones replied. G can he just leave me alone? Well, I'm guessing you're the only thing with any meaning in his life. Well, I can't believe I spent so much time with... With him! The week passes... A week passes and the group adjusts to their new lives inside the mansion. They think to themselves that the worst has passed them. You're watching VNN, the most trusted name in news ever. The GOP has just announced their candidate for this year's election. We turn to them live. It is a proud honor to choose Cristobal Winifield Vega to run for office this year. Attention citizens of the United States! You should all know me by now, but if you don't, my name is Cryptobell Winfield Vega. Cheers are up from the audience. If you will let me, I will make sure all the terrorists die. More cheers are up from the audience. The Democrats will go down? Um, I'm sorry, I'm... I would not do... I would not take down the Democrats. What do you mean? I'm a moderate. I could go either... I could go either way. Democrat, but probably ain't whatever. Anyway, I'm just read. I'm just, anyway, whatever. I'll read it. The Democrats will go down. 
Even more cheers to from the audience. Are we all fit to America? The TV shuts off. What the hell just happened? Asked Melanie. I've always voted independent, says Mimi. This can't be happening, says Jones. Why would the GOP pick this guy? Do they even know what they're doing? Ugh, thank God my half are unsuitable to be president. The American people know better than to choose someone like him. A few months pass and Christabel is shown all across America. He is the flashy Republican candidate, candidate with a charm that has taken America by storm. His speeches have been impeachable, and he looks, and his looks have been sharp. Welcome to VNN, and it looks like this decision is final. Our new president will be Cristobal Vega, with an electoral vote of 376 to 158, with Cristobal having 60% of the popular vote. Yeah, I can't believe Cristobal has won. He changed so much, says Melody. Do you think our child can live in a presidency run by him? I know, Mel. I can't believe it. Everything he did, he did normally. Could he really have changed so much as Jones? Yeah, maybe he did some soul searching. I can't imagine how much soul searching it would take to fit my half brother. This has gone on far too long, Vivian shouts Vivian as she enters the room. We had a year to attempt to end this nonsense, and now he's going to be the next president. I don't know, Vivian. You might have actually changed for the better. I don't think I can bring myself to go now, says Joe solemnly. Breaking news, this is VNN. Our current president has just died of a heart attack. And Cryptobel Vega is now being sworn in right now. Let's go to the organization live. Do I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States and will do my best of my ability to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States, recites Cryptobel. Also, I would like to add. I am not. I do not feel like I want to read this next set. This, the second half of this quote right here. I just say my. I would say in my opinion, if I in in my perspective, honestly. I mean. I would definitely protect the LGBT group, especially since I am part of them. I'm just feeling like, BB and G. The hell! How dare you? Uh, anyway, so he says he would not protect them under the new constitution he was writing. Uh, I'm glad this is just fiction. Anyway, so Jones asks, "Wait, what just happened?" Oh, this can't be happening," asks Mother's Melanie. Kid and her parents barge into the living room. Well, oh, it's like we're moving to Canada, says Vivian. Come on, pay kid, let's pack in. Impossible, gasped Mimi. This is not right, Miles looks away. This can't be. I've already chosen my vice president, and his name is Rabichozo. Um. Taking a guess at the pronunciation, it reads R A B B I C H O S O. Rabichoso. This is a picture of him, announces Crick the Bell. Wait, that looks just like the main character from Master Monster Slaves and the main character from Hyper Magician's Robot Combined. Kid realizes. Hmm. He's saying he's combined two characters for children and made up his own little character and now he's going to use it as his vice president, says Vivian. <sighs> Shoot me now. He doesn't even own copyrights on those characters. How can he claim that this rabbit chozo thing is legal? Asks Miles. Hmm. 
I think I've read about this uh, character on the internet before. I've heard this name before. Hmm. Eh, whatever, I'll read it. Where, where was I? Rabbit Jojo is my original creation. Someone from the company who makes Master Monster Slays tried to stop me. I just told him it was a parody, and so it's legal. He would not be quiet about how it was not a parody, so I shot him in the face. Shot him in the face? Has tripped the bell as he is broadcast all around the world during his inauguration. Yeah, what? Shoots a guy in the face and he gets a bit on the GLP? Hmm. I thought Cryptobell actually improved himself during the campaign and now he's reverted back to his insanity! Jones incredulously exclaims. And the difference is that he no longer has a script, Smiles points out. Thank God, Miles. He can get away with almost anything now. Well, Jones, let's drink. Right with you guys, Melanie and Mimi add. I'm listening to the rabbit Jojo give out his speech, interrupts Kid. Hmm. Well, that sounds about right. I will make sure to destroy those evil Middle Eastern countries and their impure religions. Says Rabbit Chozo, whose voice is being done by Crypto Bell, is in, in a falsetto. Yeah, I would not do that. There's a piece of paper being dangled in front of the camera, accompanied by the voice of the president, and the falsetto flashes on the television. Vivian comes to a startling conclusion. My God, the American people can't stop him. It's impossible to impeach a president now. We have no legal power over him. And he has all the power in the country now. We're screwed. We're really screwed. I'm still waiting my be to keep out his speech, says Kid. Come on, Kid, give it reality. Oh, sure. I would like to capture of the Melanie alive. The winner is to receive 500 Crypto Bell Vega dollars or CBD, which can be used to buy official Rabbit Chozo merchandise or positions of. Power announces Rabbit Chozo. What? Shouts Melanie. The fallen people. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. The fiery people must also be brought with Melanie. Dead. The names are Kit, Vivian, Miles, Mimi, and Jones. If you bring their corpses in fresh, you can receive a 50 CVD bonus. <sighs> what other nonsense? The room is completely silent. Jones slowly looks outside the window. He can see the security features already being taken down by a few people. There are people out there who are actually trying to kill us? I thought... Kill us? I thought people were better than that. What's happened to humanity? shrieks Mimi. Uh, natural instincts towards power overwhelms any trace of humanity, mutter Miles. We need to get out of here, shouts Jones. Sir, I've read the guard, says one female bodyguard. Hmm. Thank you, Anna. Wait, are you just not trying to kill us? Sir, I would never do that. However, the, your, however your other bodyguards will. Anna, will you come with us? No, sir. I'll hold off all the other bodyguards while you escape. Now go! The group hurries to the car. Jones begins the vehicle and drives as fast as he can out of the brick driveway and onto the road. <laughs> Hopefully the rest of America won't be able to identify us as easily, says Melanie. I just hope when the time comes our child will be healthy. I don't know what they're, what we're supposed to do now, Jones replied. I've never felt such emotions. I can't describe them. We need to grill Crypto Bell, says Vivian. What's that? asked Mimo. Mimi. We need to kill Crypto Bell. We must make sure his reign never comes to fruition, 
He's a monster that should have been put to rest a long time ago, Vivian Ragu angry announces. I have to agree with my angry daughter, I advise Liz. We've got nothing else going on for us right now. Might as well. Yeah, I have a feeling this is still my fault. If I ever got so close to him, if I never got so close to him in the first place, maybe... Hey, my fruit that as president will be to make today Rappachoso Day. Everyone must take the day off to appreciate my original creation and buy at least one piece of merchandise. Only official merchandise, not cheap knockoffs. For those who do not know about Rappachoso, he was born 20 years ago and is of legal age. He is our current vice president. He is a girlfriend who we actively have sexual relations with. Jones turns off the radio. Kid stares outside the window. Hey, kid. Hanging in there? Asks Vivian. The kid attempts to answer, but then closes her mouth, looks away. She only allows herself to think alone. I've thought about people. I look at each car. I might see a smile on one of the faces, but, but, what if that smile is only because they want to get us? I'm scared. Please, someone help me. And that's the end of chapter four. It's time I'll read chapter five. Okay, thank you very much. And in case you're wondering, this is another custom figure in myself. And the hair matches. Yeah. Still. Yeah. What is... Okay, have a good day. Thank you.